Hi, and welcome to this third episode of this summer's unboxing video series. In this picture, you see how big the pile was when we started. And now, after episode one, we have this. And after episode two, we are here. So let's see how far we get after this episode. Okay, are you ready? I've uh, found one, two, three, four, five big boxes. So uh, we'll open it and have a look what's inside. This box was actually sent to me uh, back in April. So that's how long some of the box these boxes are. So I've forgotten what's in here. But I think it is a Commodore 64 or maybe two. We'll see. Floppy disks. I, it's always uh, it's like a surprise uh, package when you get the floppy disk from uh, other people. You never know what's on there. Maybe it's something uh, worth uh, uh, taking care of. Cassette player for the Commodore. Holy! I remember I bought two Commodores, Commodore 64s, but I cannot remember that we agreed on two floppy drives. I need to check that. If I remember correctly, I paid like 800,000 kroners or something for this. Uh, again, just divide that by 10 and you'll have uh, approximately what it's uh, in what's the cost is in euro wow that was a lot of unwrapping so what do we have here we have um, two uh, floppy drives uh, are wick uh, 1541 i don't think i have that uh, now so that's uh, good to ha add this to my uh, floppy drive collection we have the 1541 and that looks very yellowed. And also we can see that uh, the top lid is more yellow than the bottom lid. So maybe these parts are from different uh, floppy drives. Or maybe they are just made with uh, different materials. Anyway, I will retro bright this and this. And I will clean these joysticks. And uh, there was the last one. And check if they're all working. Uh, this is one of my favorite joysticks. I've always, uh, always liked the TAC2. And the uh, Zip Stick uh, was also one of my favorites. So now we have two of these. I'm very happy for that. I also remembered I have, I had uh, this when I was younger. But I think mine was uh, not with an Atari uh, connector, but with an Apple II connector. But I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, we have uh, two Commodores here. This one is very dirty. It has crack. It's missing a function key. It's very yellowed. But it could still be working and if it's not working actually i'm hoping it's not working because then i can uh, make a video on how to repair it and repairing commodores are always fun and we have one more this one looks a lot better uh, slightly less yellowed all the keys are here and no cracks or any marks or anything so uh, this will probably look uh, quite good when we are finished uh, restoring it. So um, I promise to come back with a video on all this so you can get a glimpse of uh, 
uh, how I uh, process these uh, kind of computers. Uh, click subscribe and press notify and uh, you'll be notified when I'm ready with this uh, video. Another big package. Uh, it doesn't say anything uh, what's in here, but I have an idea, so let's take a look. It says West Computers on the box. Wow, wow. Okay, it's actually an original box in here. Wow. Take a look at this. Uh, West PC 800 in original box. Too bad, it has all this tape and stuff. Ooh. I need a way to get rid of this tape. Um, if you know a very good way that will minimize the damage on the cardboard box, please let me know. Oh my God. Oh, the cardboard box is a bit broken here. The manual, the machine. Isn't this uh, computer just a sight for sore eyes? I really like the design. You see how uh, boxy it is. It uh, looks like something that could be in your stereo uh, rack. Actually, I think these are the same measurements as a stereo or cassette player from back in the 80s would be. Because when they sold this, the advertising said that you would put it under your TV with your VHS player on top. And there was actually a wireless keyboard so you could sit back in your cozy chair and play Apple II games. Or dial up a BBC. I really, really love this design. If we take a look here, you would see that it has LEDs for a lot of functions. It, uh, these are for the alarm, so it will set if the alarm is off or daytime or nighttime or 100%. It will say if the modem is in use, if the alarm is on or if the alarm went off. Main switch on the computer, main switch on the back, computer on. That's the switch on the front. If we are using the 6502 processor or if we are using the Z80 processor. That's fancy. Keyboard, you could put it in there uh, or you could use it wirelessly on the infrared, uh, infrared receiver here. A joystick, uh, it has a DB9 pin, but I'm pretty sure it has to be Apple compatible. So I don't know what kind of uh, adapter you would need and this key is uh, to set the alarm in the different modices. There's no key here. Hmm, that's good. Maybe it's inside or maybe it's in the other box. This uh, West PC looks uh, far better than uh, the one I have so I really hope uh, it's working. I spent many many hours repairing the, the one I have. Okay, let's see in this last box. This is probably the keyboard. Yes, it is. This keyboard uh, looks like it's uh, never been used. Um, you can connect it with the wire. It also has these uh, infrared uh, senders. And here's the receiver. So I've said it before and I'm saying it again. This is an incredible machine. 
and I feel very lucky uh, who now owns two of these. I will of course make a video about this. I mentioned it in, uh, I think it was my first episode that uh, I have a, a script ready for a documentary on the West PC 800. So I will not only be showing the computer and how it's working, but I will also tell the history behind it. So stay tuned for that. Next box, a big one. I have no clue what this is. Let's open it and have a look. This is very good packed. A computer is born. Okay. IBM keyboard, okay. For the keyboard. Who knew that it was so much work uh, doing an unboxing video? So, um, Thumbs up uh, for you YouTubers that uh, do this uh, all the time. Anyway, we can see what it is now. It's an uh, Activa and I remember the story. I got this for free. Um, he was giving it away and uh, there's nothing in here. No hard drive, no graphics card, no sound cards, only the motherboard and the power supply is there. Uh, all I need it for is the handle. I have a machine like this, but the handle is broken and this handle looks fine except for a small piece there that I need to glue. But I think uh, that will not be visible uh, when everything is uh, in place. Lucky for me, he also sent uh, a matching keyboard. I did not have that on my Aptiva, so this will look great. It just needs a bit of a cleaning, not much, and then I can use it. There was some loose parts coming out of the machine, some screws, and he also sent this. I have no idea what it is, but uh, I don't think it's uh, part of this computer. Oh, I had to just give it a check, and I think actually that this fits. Uh, the brackets here, they uh, will fit on these holes so um, uh, this is probably the foot for this computer and uh, that was lucky for me because uh, my other Aptiva does not have this foot so thanks again it says uh, think station on the outside let's see what it is Maybe I should be careful opening it. Maybe there is originally think station equipment in here. Then I'll probably want to take care of the carton box. I remember now an Apple II, or maybe it's an Apple I actually, floppy drive, or no, maybe not Apple one two at all. At least it's an Apple floppy drive. And um, I don't think it will work in my Apple II slash West PC 800. Just straight out of the box. I think I have read somewhere that I need to make an adapter or buy an adapter or something like that. But I remember um, buying this because I want to use it uh, on my West PC 800 that has no floppy. And uh, I'll clean this up. Uh, oh, shit. It has a crack here, but it's fixable. That will look nice when I'm done with it. It's very yellowed, so I need to put it in the sun, or maybe I'll use. Yeah, these parts are not very big, so I'll probably just dip them in 12% hard. I hydrogen peroxide H2O2 and put everything in my oven on 50 degrees for four hours then it should come out uh, nice and uh, not yellowy 
Um, he also sent me this uh, mouse. This mouse is clearly not uh, for an Apple II or anything similar. It's uh, probably for a Mac Macintosh uh, 2 or a Mac Classic or something like that. And maybe this is the keyboard then. It's a keyboard, uh, but no cable to the keyboard. No, no cable. But it is a keyboard and it looks like uh, all the keys are there. So this will uh, probably work fine. I can't remember um, agreeing uh, on this mouse and keyboard. So maybe just uh, put it in the package as a gift. Anyway, thank you. And uh, I'll be making a video about this. So stay tuned. <laughs> You will never guess where this is sent from. It uh, says uh, that uh, Sender lives in hell. Yeah, you're right. H-E-L-L, -L, hell. So uh, I know where that is, and it's not that hot that many uh, think it is. It's actually further north in Norway, so. Anyway, let's open it. Okay. Speakeasy for the Enterprise. Enterprise 64. I have no recollection about this at all. Uh, no. Uh, I have <laughs> I have no idea who sent this to me. Well, I have his address. I need to check my emails and my bank uh, transmissions because I really cannot remember. Uh, I agreeing that uh, I'm pretty sure I need, didn't pay for this. So maybe it's a donation. Maybe not. I, I have no idea. Well, if you sent it to me, you can uh, contact me and let me know and I'll mention your name. Wow! It's, it's uh, new in the box. All the keys, they look very clean. So this machine has uh, hardly been used. And uh, the serial number is 1069. And uh, it was bought the 12th of uh, April 1985. Wow. And it comes with a speakeasy. So I guess that's some sort of uh, voice modulator. Speeze EQ user handbook, a cassette, and the unit, and a cable. There was no dust at all on this. So if it has been used, it hasn't been used for long. It actually looks uh, almost brand new. Wow, and um, it says uh, cassette player, it's Norwegian, Maximal 544, it uh, looks uh, brand new, no dust, no markings, so the people uh, using this computer and this cassette player hasn't used it much. Let's check out this bag. Enterprise. Programs, programs, 
programs. Lord of Time, level 9, computing. Wow. Wow, it's so much uh, stuff in here. Airwolf Star Strike 3D with stereo sound. Sorcery stereo sound. In a computer from 1985. Uh, wow, I need to check that out. And uh, Fantasia Diamond. Wow. Okay, we need to open this box and have a closer look at the computer. Ooh, look at this. Look how clean it is. And we have some manuals. Demonstration cassette. And the power supply. And probably a cable for the cassette player. Uh, and a cartridge. cartridge. Holy! It's uh, not often I get mail from hell, and uh, but this is uh, probably the best thing I've ever received from that part. Wow! I need. Uh, I still have no idea uh, who sent me this, except I need to uh, Google his name and uh, see if if it was a gift or something we agreed on. Wow! Thank you. Ooh, this is heavy. It says carefully with red pen. And it's a heavy machine and he has written what it is. So, uh, but I'm not telling you. So you have to see me opening it. Can you see what it is? I think you can. Now you can see what it is. It's an IBM uh, 5160, also called the uh, IBM Personal Computer XT. You see it has a hard drive, it has a floppy drive, not the large one, this is the half height floppy drive. I don't have that floppy drive uh, from before. They have a couple of these machines from before, but I just need more. I really like these machines. I like how they look. I like how it's metal and how big everything is. And whenever I can, I get hold of these machines. So, um, my first 5150 machine, I had a lot of trouble repairing because the DMA controller didn't work. But I learned a lot of stuff. So after that, now it's a lot easier. Also, I could recommend a webpage called Minus Zero Degrees. It has a lot of information about how to use and repair these old IBMs. I was hoping to see a composite output on this uh, graphics card because that would mean uh, that it could be an original CGA graphics but since I don't see a composite output here it's probably just a monochrome display adapter so uh, but I'll uh, check this out uh, maybe I'll make a video about it and uh, then we can find out together what kind of uh, graphics uh, this machine has if it, if it has graphics at all this is the pile uh, when we started on episode 3 and uh, this is how it looks 
after we finished episode 3. If we turn around, we can see a big pile of uh, used boxes and plastic and wrapping stuff that I need to throw out. If we take a trip back to my uh, office, we can see the pile of all the equipment that uh, we have now unboxed. It uh, takes uh, considerably less space, but it's still a huge uh, amount of uh, very nice retro stuff. So stay tuned for episode 4. I have no recollection. <laughs> recollection. I have no recollection. Like, I have no recollection uh, about this at all. Um, uh, no.